Well, as a woman reflected on her childhood, she said that one piece of advice that she remembers from her mother was that she always said, when you're in a hurry, take your time. Years later, that wisdom all came back to her as she was rushing to leave home. Running late for work, she ran through the kitchen, reached into the fridge, pulled out a container of yogurt to gulp down before she left. Because she was hurrying, she wasn't careful enough about pulling out the yogurt, and it fell, the plastic container splitting, spilling the contents on the floor and all over her shoes. But not before she knocked over another container of tapioca pudding that her husband had left on the refrigerator shelf as well. That container too fell, the lid popping off when it hit the floor, the tapioca pudding exploded not only all over the floor and back up into the fridge, but there was plenty to splatter up the kitchen wall. It took her several minutes to get everything cleaned up and her shoes, she said, might never smell quite the same. Not the quick gulp of yogurt that she had hoped for. And who of us not has not had a good glop of tapioca pudding sliding down our walls? We lead what is at times a frenzied life, addicted to hurry. Author Kathleen Norris wrote, one day when I timed an annoying computer delay and found that it constituted all of 10 seconds, I had what I would call a monk moment, a quick vision that told me, pay attention, watch yourself. I had let technology and its attendant idle efficiency to make a fool of me. Speaking of technology, according to new research reported by the New York Post, do you know that Americans check their phones on the average once every 12 minutes, which translates into about 80 times a day? One person in 10 checks their phones on the average every four minutes. Four hours is about the longest that the average person is willing to go before the need to check their phone compels them to take a look. And it was found that the average person spends 53 minutes on Instagram per day, not including Facebook, Snapchat, and LinkedIn. That's a lot of fast information coming our way. For many of us, hurry has become a way of life, a way of living. It's been called an idol because it grabs our attention, and if we're not careful, it consumes our loyalty. Idols are like that. They can begin to make us and we're unaware of just how dangerous that can be. The best idols remain cloaked in the garment of innocent acceptability. After all, isn't it admirable to be efficient? Isn't it all about getting a lot done? Don't we want to do things as quickly as possible? By these criteria, hurry may be seen as one of our culture's most dangerous and pernicious idols. Listen to some everyday expressions that subliminally invite hurry into our lives. Speedy recovery, hurry up, mad dash, get a move on, ASAP, the sooner the better, step on it, shake a leg, get cracking, I've got to run, I don't have much time, wait a minute, just a second, right away, how soon can I expect it? Running late, running scared, running out of time, run down, on the run, grab a bite, fast food, it'll only take a minute, on the double, move it or lose it. And there are a multitude of other words or phrases that start with the instant, start with instant, fast, and express. Just listen sometimes. And perhaps we've been conditioned from an early age as we think back to our childhood where we used to read, run, Dick, run, 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 run and see. And Jane did a lot of running as well. <laughs> Consider this, information is coming at us fast, incredibly faster than ever before in history. We know in minutes, maybe even seconds, what generations before us could not even imagine knowing. It's thought that a single edition of the New York Times contains more information than someone living in the 17th century would have encountered in their entire lifetime. Many of us experience what has now been called hurry sickness. It's a behavior pattern characterized by continually rushing and anxiousness, an overwhelming and continual sense of urgency. One psychologist writes that in our uber-fast, uber-techno world, we are experiencing an epidemic 
of hurry sickness. He continues, we can try to sustain living at a breakneck speed, but sooner or later, physically, mentally, and or emotionally, we fall apart. Our bodies and minds weren't meant to endure the continual stress of hurrying. Blood pressure spikes, hearts wear out. At the least, we become irritable and easily angered, and we get upset from frustration and exhaustion. One wise seminary professor of mine warned us that if we don't careful, carefully and intentionally slow ourselves, our, slow ourselves, our bodies will do it for us. So this Lent, as we consider growing in God, as we think about practices and disciplines we consider, we ask, why slow? Slowing allows space and time for God and for growing in God. Even the disciples, at Jesus' invitation, got away from it all and left the busyness behind for a time. In Mark 6, we read, Then because so many people were coming and going that they, the disciples, did not even have a chance to eat, he, Jesus, said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. You know, I think Jesus knew the importance of slowing, and he modeled it for his friends. With slowing, we find that we have more patience. We're not constantly rushing to the next thing. Slowing helps us to live in the present moment to the fullest, not missing the blessings that are ours if we're slow enough to notice. Slowing helps us to trust God's unhurried time schedule, that kairos that nour nourishes our souls. In slowing, we find freedom from addiction to cell phones, email, messaging, and all that speeds up the pace of our everyday life. As we slow, we are living the truth that love, being fully present to others, that that love and hurry are fundamentally incompatible. Slowing enables us, enables us the space to receive interruptions graciously. And when we slow, we are realizing that the fruit of the Spirit is not an instant work. We are a work in progress. In a workshop on hurry, a participant made this confession. He said, I agree with everything everyone is saying about hurry. I know that I'm hurting myself. I feel the pain. I just feel like I don't know how to stop. Maybe we can identify with that. Maybe we ran by our fridge just this morning and grabbed a yogurt to gulp down quickly. So what are some ways that we can disengage from the busyness and slow our hurry? How can we live life at a speed that allows for thinking more deeply, listening more carefully, and seeing more clearly? It has been suggested that rather than use the negative term slow down, we make it positive. How can we savor the moment? The psalmist invites us to taste and see that the Lord is good and happy are those who trust in God. As we taste and see, as we savor, it's not just not being in a hurry, it's actually pausing and savoring. To savor is to taste or smell with pleasure, to relish, to delight in, to enjoy. The word has its origin in the Latin word sapiri, which means taste and be wise. And this connection has never been more important to taste and be wise. The pace of savoring, of tasting, is more than negating or minimizing hurry. It implies noticing and paying attention, internalizing. There is more than meets the eye, and perhaps it is there that we find God. There are some deliberate techniques that intentionally provide relief from frantic activity and the compulsion to hurry that can help us to develop the art of slowing. Did you know that this past Friday was National Day of Unplugging? I don't know who decides these things or who declares these days, but I think that this one should be a keeper. It's the first Friday in March, 24 hours, sun up and sundown, a time to remember to unplug, to unwind, and to relax. And if you haven't filled out the survey that's in your bulletin, complete it and then look and see which responses you wish were different. Develop one or two modifications in your behavior 
that will produce different results if you retake this test just a month down the road. Experts say, drive in the slow lane. Or I say, better yet, get in the longest line at the grocery store and don't count the things in the person's cart ahead of you or watch the checkout person trying to help them be more efficient by staring at them. <laughs> get enough rest. Speak more slowly, like Pastor Greg did so beautifully in the prayer. Look people in the eye. Chew slowly, cherishing the gift of good food. Savor it. Sit long at the table. You know, a lot happens around the dinner table when we make the space and the time. Insert downtime between meetings and appointments. Don't back to back to back. Count your blessings before you even lift your head off the pillow in the morning, remembering to name three things each morning for which you are thankful. And remember to breathe, breathe deeply, and breathe long. Each week we've designed a time during this service to try a new practice or discipline. This morning we want to slow, to disengage from the busyness around us. So I invite you to get comfortable in the pew, rest your hands in your lap, palms up or palms down, and we're going to view, view um, a video this morning for a few minutes that captures a bit the beauty of God's creation. There's some relaxing music. Feel free to watch the video, or if you'd rather, close your eyes and listen to the music. Whatever helps you to best slow. And continue to notice your breathing, deep and intentional. Imagine that you are breathing in Christ's presence and breathing out anxiety, fear, and hurriedness. Thank you. 
Savor the slow. Many of you know that just about six weeks ago, our nephew Jonathan and his wife Ashley lost Scarlett, their almost one-year-old, when they found her unresponsive after a short nap. It's been incredibly difficult for Scarlett's parents, grandparents, and for all of our family. And recently, Ashley posted this wisdom on Facebook. She said, in Scarlett's honor, please take a moment and slow down. Love your kids. Read them one more story before bedtime. Go for a walk or a bike ride. Laugh so hard that you cry with them. Life is just too short to not take in these precious moments. What do we risk losing when we hurry? The present moment is the only moment that we ever have to live. It is here and it will never come again. Life is too precious to miss. And the faster we go, the more likely we are to overlook the things that really matter. So let's remember this Lent. Breathe. Breathe deeply. And know that God is here and God is now. Amen.